Okay, I'm just putting this in the video somewhere because there's like seven Beedrill on screen. I'm just getting swarmed by Beedrill and they're supposed to be rare Pokemon. Let's Go is just an amazing game. This is going to be your guide to catching rare Pokemon in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. So on screen right now, we have a really good example of how weird the rare Pokemon mechanics are in these games. Because there's two different kinds of rare Pokemon. We have a separate rare Pokemon encounter table for Pokemon like Charmander, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Dragonite, Porygon, Chansey, and a few others. And if you haven't seen that video, I recommend you checking it out in the description down below. But there's also 1% chance spawn Pokemon, and that's what today's video is about. So if this video helps you out in any way, don't forget to leave a like on it. YouTube is very interaction driven right now you know the more that you engage with the video the more it gets out there and then more people are helped by the video so it's effectively a win-win for everyone and today we're just gonna be talking about the ways of improving the chances of getting the one percent pokemon getting on catch combos and then just catching them non-stop because as you notice i just had a beedrill on screen and it's supposed to be one percent which doesn't seem super rare but also we have like bulbasaur and all kinds of pokemon running around so i'm done catching this guy i'll show you guys like how crazy these mechanics end up working. And also, I don't want to break my catch combo, so I'm just going to leave. There's plenty of Beedrill in this forest. So, much like rare Pokemon, 1% Pokemon have very similar encounter methods. So if you actually use a lure, you increase the chance of these Pokemon spawning. Also, being on a catch combo increases the chances of these Pokemon spawning. So that's why we're seeing like Bulbasaur and Beedrill on screen at the same time. Because I have a catch combo 11, which makes these guys really common. But I also have a catch combo of 11 for Beedrill, so that's going to make them really common. Like, we just saw three of them pop up. So you can use this for all of the Pokemon that we described in this video. Kangaskhan. Pinsir, Scyther, the 1% Pokemon, they actually start getting a lot more and more common, like other rare Pokemon, and then you can catch combo them, which means you get candies, you get high IVs, you can get them competitively, so that's pretty much it. As for the locations of these Pokemon, as we can see, we're in Viridian Forest, and we have some really pesky Beedrill that are challenging to catch running around the place. So if you have Let's Go Eevee version, it's going to be Beedrill. If you have Let's Go Pikachu version, it's going to be Butterfree. And now we can start breaking down some of the other areas where you find 1% Pokemon. Now, not all of these Pokemon are going to be exclusive. Some of them are going to be fully evolved. So it's really just one of those cool things where a Ninetales pops out in front of you, and that's just awesome. But there's also some Pokemon you can't get other ways, like Pinsir, Scyther. They don't have any pre-evolutions, no way of cheesing it like that. So let's head over to some other areas. Well, I mentioned Ninetales, so let's go for Ninetales. On routes 7 and 8, so on the left and right side of Saffron City, you can find Ninetales and Kadabra with a 1% chance, or in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu version, that's going to be an Arcanine instead, so version exclusives, they still apply. Now, these are really garbage routes for trying to farm rare Pokemon, that on Route 8, it's like... It's a bigger space, but there's like really scattered uh, patches of grass, so it doesn't really spawn Pokemon too frequently. And on Route 7, all you have is this tiny little patch of grass over here, but it is a lot easier here. I think it's going to be quicker, because you can go in and out of the building and reset it. Also, it saves a lot of money, because you can burn through lures on Route 8, just by trying to like fly over and reset Pokemon or something. But with this, lures are based on steps. So you're just taking a few steps either way, and then that's going to kind of preserve your lure and give you a better chance of getting that Ninetales or Arcanine to spawn. Well, we got a Kadabra, and you know what? I'm going to take it. Now, I'm not going to catch it because I have the Beedrill catch combo, which is going to help me for other Pokemon in this video. But as you can see, um, there's just some cool Pokemon that can spawn. Now, Route 10 is where things get a little fancy because you can find Dragonair here, but it's kind of weird how the Pokemon spawn because there's a very narrow strip of land, and if you get a Magikarp, it's pretty much going to keep blocking you. Also, you can use Dragonite to kind of fly over or get another flying Pokemon, fly over the area, and then kind of keep scouting until you end up with a Dragonair. But Dragonite can be found in the sky on Route 10, which is like another weird thing. Like, we go over here, there's a spawn that could either be a Charizard. Hey, wow, we just got the whole gang showing up. So, yeah, you can also find Dragonite here, or Dragonair here. I don't really know what it means or what it adds, but it is one of the, like, those rare Pokemon spawns and you can find in the area. Also, by flying over, as you can see, we're getting a couple of spawns, but it's also going to waste lures pretty heavily and it's going to kind of be crazy, but that's where you can find that Pokemon. Okay, I think I might have been a little unfair to Dragonair because doing that during the story mode actually means you can get kind of like a Dragonite before you can just start catching in the wild. And if you go to Rock Tunnel, you can get a Kangaskhan. This dude just like popped up when I walked in. So sometimes the odds are just like better or worse depending on the grass that you're going to. Viridian Forest has a lot of grass spots, so a lot of Pokemon can frequently spawn. Same with any kind of cave. Pokemon that are found in caves, there's a lot of open patches, so they just start popping up all over the place. And let's, uh, we got an Onix. Onix is a, okay, Onix is actually a Pokemon I want to talk about too. 
So there's Pokemon that are 1% in some areas, but are higher percent in others. So ditto. Ditto in the Pokemon Mansion is going to be 1%. But in Cerulean Cave, it's going to be 5%. In, in uh, Mount Moon, Onyx is a 1%, but here in Rock Tunnel, it's going to be a 10%. So it's not really as much on the guide. And then if we just kind of wander around, Kangaskhan, I guess I got lucky on that Kangaskhan right there. But again, this has a lot more areas for Pokemon to spawn, a lot of uh, ladders so you can reset the area really quickly. Getting Kangaskhan for Mega Kangaskhan, actually not going to be too bad. Cerulean Cave is where you can find Poliwrath in the water. Now, again, I just don't like these claustrophobic waterways, so if money is no worry to you, that's when you can do the repel method. If you really want the Dragonair, if you just want to flex and catch like every Pokemon in the game at some point, and you really want that Poliwrath, then you can just do repel lure strats and then try to make Pokemon spawn. So yeah, you can notice that there's like Poliwag and Poliwhirl and stuff, which means eventually you're going to end up with a Poliwrath here. Actually, almost caught one yesterday, but I wasn't recording, so I'm a little sad. But uh, yeah, the way the Pokemon move around here actually isn't as bad as Route 10, because you can kind of dodge them in the corners and stuff, but Poliwrath uh, could take a little bit of time. Time that I don't really care about Poliwrath enough to go for. On routes 18, 19, and 21, you can find Starmie in the water, but Route 21 is a bit more interesting because there's also this patch of grass. So depending on what version of the game you have, you can find a Vile Plume or a Victory Bell. So as you've been seeing like Oddish in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, that's how you get Vile Plume, and then getting Victory Bell is going to be Pokemon Let's Go P Eevee. Now, the thing about this is it feels a bit trivial because, like, Staryu is already hanging around, getting a Starmie isn't really too much more difficult after that, and then this patch of grass, I feel like it's more of a novelty that if you're, like, walking by here and all of a sudden, like, a Victory Bell pops up or something, uh, soft resetting or going for these Pokemon really isn't that important. But you know what is important? Scyther or Pinsir. So let's go find them. On routes 14 and 15, you can find Pinsir and Scyther. Now, Route 14 is a little unfortunate because that's the only patch of grass that you have, and then it's a long walk back to Route 15, where there's also not really too many. You have these, like, little strips of grass over here, and Pokemon can spawn inside of them. So this seems like another thing where you just kind of hop off your Pokemon, you just kind of walk in and out between there, and you hope something spawns in that little patch. So as you can see, four Pokemon just burst out of that, and we had a small chance for one of those to be the Pokemon that we're looking for. So Pinsir can be found in Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, and Scyther can be found in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. So yeah, if we just kind of go in and out, we can see that the Pokemon spawns are actually pretty decent because it's the only patch of grass that's there, so it tries to force a lot of Pokemon in there. I'd say you wait for at least two or three Pokemon to spawn before hopping in, hopping out. It does preserve your lore, so like Route 14 doesn't really matter too much. Again, it's one of those like novelty things if you're running by and you just get incredibly lucky. At some point, if you enter enough routes, if you play the game long enough, one of the 1% Pokemon might just pop up, and if it's what you're looking for, you should probably catch combo it until you get a higher combo, and then the Pokemon are just going to be all over the place. Hey, we got a Pinsir. So the name of the game is Patience. That only took me like an extra minute. Remember, these are supposed to be rare Pokemon. It's also like getting a catch combo started for Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, and those other rare Pokemon. And maybe you can even like walk to that second patch and walk back if you're really trying to like get as many spawns as possible. But eventually you'll start paying off and they can snowball those combos pretty well. Alright, so in Seafoam Islands, you can find Cloyster as a 1% chance to spawn. Now, Shelter is already here fairly commonly, but it's just one of those things, like, if you want to go for those Pokemon straight up, it's a nice little challenge, it's something you can add to this, and the best way of doing it is by getting swept away by the current. Because when that happens, you go into a nice, big patch of calm water, and you can find quite a few Pokemon that will spawn there. So yeah, in here, this is... This is kind of it. There's also a nice little ladder close by, so what you can do is you can kind of float around here until it fills up. See, there goes Shelter, and there was a chance that could have just been a Cloyster. After that, run up the ladder, run down, surf again. It does take quite a bit of time to go through all the animations and all the wait times, but if you really want to go for it, you can find Cloyster as a 1% chance spawn in Seafoam Island. Alright guys, home stretch. Fly to the Indigo Plateau, and we can find three Pokemon that have a 1% chance to spawn. Now, the best way of doing this is just getting your flying Pokemon, going to the top of it at the uh, Pokemon League, and then just flying down. Because it's not quite at the Pokemon League, it's also not in Victory Road. So we fly over that, and then we go to this patch of grass over here, and this has a 1% chance of getting Executor, Nidoking, or Nidoqueen. As we can see, there's already a lot of their pre-evolutions running around, so we have Execute right there. Saves your Leaf Stone, really doesn't matter, and then Nidoran, or Nidorino, Nidorina, all the Nidoran, fun stuff like that running around. And you can just kind of run between these two areas until you find those Pokemon that appear. So there we go, guys. That is the craziness of 
more rare Pokemon stuff in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. There's also 4% spawns, 5% spawns. I think it's just kind of more a cool feature because there's, like I said, there's some Pokemon where it's more of a novelty. And I think that's awesome. Like, it, it really en enhances the gameplay if you're not going for them. And then you're just kind of wandering around. Boom, like Nidoking pops up in your face. Or you get that 1% chance for an Onix inside of Mount Moon. Another thing is that you have a 1% chance of finding Clefable in Mount Moon. But Moonstones do respawn inside the crater in Mount Moon, so you can kind of just get a Clefairy into Clefable whenever you want. It's more just a treat. That's what I really like about Pokemon Let's Go. It makes you feel rewarded by just sending some really interesting RNG your way every once in a while. It's like, oh hey, a rare Pokemon popped up, you're flying through the sky. It's just supposed to be a pleasant surprise more than anything. There's also those exclusive Pokemon like Pinsir and uh, Kangaskhan that you can't get any other way. So with that, Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Comment down below how you think about what you feel about this guide. Was it a good guide? What do you think about rare Pokemon in general? Uh, how do you feel about like the split of the, having different kinds of rare Pokemon being able to be found in different scenarios? It's all kind of crazy to me. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.